for this, man. You are back, uh, man. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure, guys. We just need to turn on the light and Adrian shows up. <laughs> That's how Adrian rolls. <laughs> hey, Paul. How are you, man? Doing good, Naveed. How are you today? Good, man. All right. Should we get started? Give a couple more minutes. What do you guys think? Uh, so I, I think, uh, what do you think, man? Uh, yeah, start? I think we can get it started. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. So um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, putting a, a short stop in your Friday just to join us today on, on, on this edition of, of Power Lunch, and, and I'm, I'm very glad to be able to be presenting for you all. And um, my, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Adrian Corona. I'm a cloud specialist, and, and um, I'm part of the uh, technical uh, delivery uh, team here for the U.S. South Central region. Um, I've been 10 years with Microsoft. I focus mostly in infrastructure and in cybersecurity. My background has been into uh, Windows Server, Win, uh, System Center, all, all the good stuff, Hyper-V, Identity, all, all that kind of good, good, good stuff. But lately, I've been focusing more into specifically Azure, like everybody else. <laughs> um, so anyway, to, today, I'm, I'm going to go over very quickly about the um, service updates. And, and there's a couple of them in there. And the main topic for today, it's going to be the virtual network service endpoints. So um, I'm going to be trying to uh, diving deeper into that in, in just a few minutes. And then um, I will allow some time for, for Q and A. So, but before um, I'm, I want to talk a little bit about the one of our, our new services that has been announced, which is the uh, availability zones in, in Azure. This service is in preview right now, but for those who don't know, um, and we have it in preview only in two regions: U.S. East two and West Europe. Um, in, but what for those who don't know, an availability zone is, is a fault isolated location within a specific Azure region. And, and they are those regions are designed with independent power cooling and, and networking. And, and it's the, the, the goal of, of this availability zones is to protect um, or help you protect your, your applications from failures of an entire data center with uh, and, and reducing the um, latency and having a better high availability. Again, maybe this is a, a very interesting topic for, a, for a, uh, another session any other day, um, but it's, it's a service that it's been um, being requested a lot from, from our customers and it's been a, in a hot topic and, and we are very, uh, very happy that we are able to, um, to uh, you know, to, to offer that to our <clears throat> to our customers, right? Um, let me just switch my second slide. And any everybody can see my screen. Is that correct? Yes. Yep, awesome. Yeah, yep. Yep. Great. So um, the next, um, let's let's just dip down into a deep dive in, into what a uh, virtual network uh, service endpoints are. So today, when you deploy a um, both either storage or or a database, you get a public endpoint. What does that mean? Is that you get something like your storage name that um, that that storage.azure.com and it's reachable from everybody ev everywhere. I mean, obviously we do have all the security inherited in the platform to prevent um, from from your data to be compromised or or having any any kind of issues around that area. However. Um, there, from security purposes, um, there's been a, a, um, a big push from our customers to, who are asking, hey, I don't want to present, I don't want to be, I don't want, I want to prevent this, this um, services from being reachable from the outside. Until today, it, that was not possible. Again, it was once you request a, a new service, whether it was a public service or a pass service, that, uh, that service was sitting in a, in a public interface. Um, or it was uh, the traffic was public, um, and, and um, now we're changing that. So, what are part, what are, this graphic here shows you a little bit into how this works. So um, I'm just showing here storage, but um, 
right now the, the, the virtual network set service endpoints preview service is um, uh, available only for Azure storage and Azure SQL database. So I know we offer a, a plethora of other services, but this is the two most important ones that we want to tackle first. So a, a, with, a, with a virtual end service endpoint, you can extend that virtual network private address and the identity of that VNet to the Azure services over a direct connection. So um, an endpoint will allow you to secure those critical Azure services to only your virtual network, meaning that all the traffic from your VNet to the Azure service will always remain in the Azure backbone network. Um, that's, that's a very powerful um, feature here. So if, if you see this diagram real quick, um, this storage account can only be accessed through my virtual machine uh, or, or through the, any virtual machine in my subnet or subnets within my virtual network. Um, I, I can do that pair up and, and all the traffic coming in will be serviced through that um, service endpoint and, and it's going to be local to the Azure fabric. This is also very powerful, and, and I'll get into a little bit more details here in, in, in a second, but um, some um, other extensions is if you have express route or, or <clears throat> site to site um, VPNs, you can also make use of the storage. There's a few considerations when you when you try to use SQL, but um, you can still use that, that or take leverage of that on premises. Um, kind of like public peering that we would do today. Okay, so let me just, uh, I'll get into, and for everybody, I'll try to get into the questions by the end of the presentation, just to make this a quick, a little bit faster. Um, and, and also Naveed and the team are, are helping out answering any questions you, you have. Yes, uh, yeah, we will address those and you can take rest of them to, towards the end, man. Excellent, dude, so thank you. So what, what are the, the, the top scenarios where this could be very helpful? So you can secure, um, resources across multiple subnets. So, um, and technically, is yes, you can allow traffic, or you can by fully removing public internet access to resources, you can allow that traffic only from your virtual network, as I've uh, uh, talked earlier. Um, you can also inspect the traffic in coming in and out from that virtual network to those services. So, um, this is very powerful. You can use. If, if you want to inspect the, or filter the traffic destined to any of those services from a, v, a VNet, you can now deploy a, a NVA or a network virtual appliance within the virtual network and then apply service endpoints to those subnets where the network uh, virtual appliance is deployed. And, and therefore... Please check the number you have dialed. Oh, <laughs> somebody called. Um, and then you have uh, secure Azure um, service resources only to this subnet. So. This will be very helpful if you wish to restrict Azure services access from your VNet only to specific Azure resources through that NVA uh, filtering. Um, and, and last is um, securing Please your... Please check the number you have dialed. Oh, wow. Somebody called again. Um, there's various Azure services can be directly deployed into specific subnets in a virtual network. So you can pick and choose which Azure services will be uh, enabled to any managed service subnet, and you can do that by setting up a service endpoint on that specific um, managed service subnet as well. So um, let me let's uh, delve into that for a second. Um, so I'm going to start with SQL. So very easy. Um, we when you have a SQL Server, so I should have um, SQL Server over here. You deploy a SQL Server. You have a database. Um, and you have your firewall settings. So by default, what, what I'm showing you here, there's two endpoints. One is my um, this is my IP address. This is on premises. This is a VM running uh, in uh, in in my data center. It's running on, on top of VMware, I believe. And and right now, if I try to log in, I can see my website. Right? I can see that I have small bakery products, and I can I can interact with this database. I can do muffins or whatever I want. Right, um, and I can. It, it works just right. And this is writing. This is writing from on-premises directly back to a database in Azure. This is the firewall rule that allows this specific IP address. But if you notice here, um, 
couple of specific things that are, are very interesting. You can add a, either a client IP, which is the, the IP address from which I am browsing this portal right now, or you can also add allow access to Azure services. So what does that mean? Having turning this to on means that every service within the Azure backbone by default will have access to my environment, to my database. Right now, I turn it off, and um, if you notice here, I'm logging into this other machine, which is running in Azure. It's a VM running in Azure, and if I go to that web website, it tells me, no, you cannot. Although, even though I'm in, the, in Azure, that uh, turning off this feature of allowing access to, to Azure services will prevent that from happening. And some customers want to do that because the fact that it's it, we don't specify which traffic is coming in. allowing access to azure services means that any type of traffic from any customer for that matter could potentially reach those services so if i turn this to on and i try again i should be able now to to um do an i as we said let's try again should be able to get there yes so there's my database now so but the thing is at this point my rule is allowing anybody, if you guys have any kind of uh, virtual machines, you can reach up this uh, public endpoint and start um, uh, and authenticate against my database. So that's that's where virtual endpoints comes uh, into, into the mix. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, I'm going to turn off everything, every single um, endpoint back to, uh, and, and right now my default rule is going to be Deny for everybody, but this uh, local on-premises server, which uh, I, I can't remove in a second. Now, turning on service endpoints, that's a virtual network setting. It is, it's, it works in conjunction with SQL and storage, but it really is a, a setting or a feature at the virtual networking layer. So when I go here into my um, virtual network, I can see that, and you're probably going to have uh, this endpoints service endpoints here in preview, which by the way, in for Azure SQL, we only have uh, West Central US, West US2, and East US for, uh, that's the only three regions where we have this available. So if you want to test that out, make sure you create your resources in any of those, those locations. So um, the next step is I'm going to enable my service endpoints. And, and if you can see here, I have just the two services. I'm going to go with SQL first. And, and you can pick and choose which subnets. I have two subnets. One is my default subnet where my front end is, and then it could, I just have, I happen to have a back end subnet. But it's, it's um, you can have any, any, any type of subnets in here. You can pick and choose or select them all. It really doesn't matter. So when you click add here, it takes a couple of seconds, but in reality, or under the covers, what's happening is we can, we are adding rules, like kind of like UDR rules into, um, uh, into your network. So this is the, the effective route to, to, for you to troubleshoot and compare what's going on. You can see this is a VM, that this is my front end VM, the, the one that I'm, I'm, I was showing you. And looking at my effective rules, I see that I have uh, default rules like anybody, anybody else have, like you have my internet traffic, I have uh, my um, some Azure and my private uh, my um, all, all my private um, like class A, B, and C uh, IP ranges in here. But now, after I enable um, service endpoints and I click refresh, I'm just hoping this comes up real quickly. Let's see if this is yeah, it's right here. You're gonna have a new route, so it tells me it's one IP and 16 more. So technically, what we're doing is we're adding a user-defined route to your not network or subnet that applies and tells me that any any type of, of uh, traffic going to this v, um, um, IP addresses, which happen to be the SQL Server uh, public endpoint IP addresses, that traffic should be ma managed or handled through the My Virtual Network Service endpoint. So what does that mean? It means, going back to here to my, my machine, this should let me still go and, and connect. So I'm going to do an IIS reset just to make sure uh, everything is, is, is um, it's a new connection. All right, so when I do this, this should work. Oh, wow, what happened, right? 
it doesn't work. Why it's not? But look at the, the type of message. It's, it's a little bit different from what I had earlier. First, it tell me your IP address is not available or um, reachable or not allowed in the firewall. But now it's telling me that my login is or my client is not allowed and something going on with my login. And everything. So what? Why is this happening? Well, remember I told you it's a twofold process. The first process is enable this at the SQL uh, or at the virtual network layer, which creates that UDR. But you still have to define. On this, on the SQL Server, you still have to define which network are you allowing traffic from. So that's that's the technique that I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to call this, um, say, default subnet rule, and you can choose your subscription, then uh, choose your VNet, and just click OK. This is adding this 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 uh, under the covers is adding those those rules for the firewall that says on the traffic coming from this 10.001 uh, or 10.01x, whatever subnet network is, just let it go through. So it tells me that it's ready now, and now if I go back to my machine, um, there he is. I have my, my SQL server. But now if I go back to my, um, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this endpoint and save this setting. If I go back to my on-premises and I do another IIS reset, um, make this open. just to speed up the process instead of waiting for the connection to be terminated. Um, all right, come on, come on. This should be uh, preventing access from this machine. There he is. So now it tells me, no, you, you cannot log in with this IP address. So now I very quickly, very effectively, I have um, disabled access from anywhere, in, but only the, the, the traffic that it's originating from this virtual network. Again, you can, and, and as you notice, I can have a combination of public IP addresses and, and also uh, networks. So there are, um, I'm just going to go back real quick to my, um, presentation here, uh, there are a couple things, a couple considerations. So yeah, preview is available only in these three regions so far. Um, if you have a web app in a subnet that has uh, service endpoints, that functionality is not there yet. And, and we know we know it's a, it's a challenge and we're working on it um, and we will be uh, enabled that, enabling that very, very soon. Um, all all the reference subnets must be hosted in the same geo level on the um, same geo region that hosts the SQL database. That's that's a big one too. Um, there's also that each database can have up to 128 ACL entries for any given virtual network. Um, that's another consideration point. If you have large networks, you just need to make sure you don't add um, you you're not you're under this number and. Uh, Needless to say, this is this is all all new stuff. It's it's running on the ARM portal. It's not um, it's not available for classic VMs. So another important or interesting thing that it's it's uh, you need you need to be consider. And also, um, IP address ranges do not apply to site to site VPN or express route for for Azure SQL. So that is that's a that's a topic that we will discuss later on when I talk about storage, um, um, but right now we don't support that for uh, either site uh, in, um, site to site or SQL. Uh, I'm sorry, site to site or, or express route. It's not supported yet. It will be soon, but not 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 yet. Um, all right. So. Um, I'm going to move on now to the another example, which is storage. Um, let me just switch back to my demo. So storage is very, very similar. So I have a storage account, and um, in, and the storage has a little bit more flexibility. It has a little bit more um, regions available, which I will again I will show you here in a second. But you have a just a standard storage account. Again, it has to be deployed in those regions. There's nothing that I need to do. Um, or no, no specific commands that I need to enable. Like you, I, I don't know if you're following this, but 
which is like other networking features like um, like service tags or application groups, things like that, you need to request, uh, like do a PowerShell request for um, for access to the preview. For this, for storage, it, it is not. It will be uh, enabled by default for everybody that creates a new, uh, um, a new um, storage account in this region. So when I click here, it's, it's, it's similar, but this is what's called a default route. So that my, right now my default route is all networks. So again, same concept. Anybody in the world with my uh, name, my, my, this this account name, and my key could potentially reach into this VM. So uh, to prove that, I'm going to show you this this commandlet here. It's going to give me my default action for my uh, test VNet Tomorrow uh, storage account. So when I when I run this, it tells me, yeah, your default route is allowed. So that means that if I come back here to my uh, on-premises server and I open up Storage Explorer, I pre-configured a uh, storage account key and everything, just gonna do it uh, over and over. But um, when I open this up and I have my storage account, I have test Vino. I come here and expand and I, I don't have any data the only thing i have is just a container so when i click containers i can see my test container and everything is is great and this is my on-premises environment same thing if i go into my uh my azure vm i can do the same process i can log in um, and try to reach and there he is Right, so I see block containers and I can enumerate this data easily, right? No problem because I have that allow route. Um, so now the next one is um, I'm going to the portal and I can choose my network. Um, so let me know. Uh, I already had this. I'm just going to do that again just to show you. But when I click here, select the networks and I leave everything blank. What happens is my default rule is going to change to deny. So now, if you notice here, everything is denied. So every all all, all my traffic is it's now denied, and this should keep working unless I do it. So, yeah. Um, if if I reopen Storage Explorer, I should get a, a an error from both locations, right? Um, let me just try from here as well. And um, while I do this, is is very important kind of to mention some of the other considerations is um, you have up to 100 virtual, virtual network rules that you can have for, for storage. Um, and once, once the network rules are applied, they are enforced for all requests. And I'll get to that in a second because that, that's important. But as you can see in here, now um, I got a, a this request is not authorized. So everybody is locked out from, from my storage account. Now I can pick and come back and selectively choose a few things. I can do an IP address range, so IP rules like you normally would do. It's in CIDR format um, or just any, any plain IP address. But also there's some exceptions in here. This is very important. So allow trusted Microsoft services to access this storage account. This trusted, uh, it's similar to what I showed you with um, SQL. Like if I go back to SQL and I, I, I do this, allow access to Azure services, this is on and off. This, this um, list here includes compute. So VMs are part of it. In, in storage, the, the not. So if, if I go into my, um, this is the uh, services that are part of, of those trusted networks. So there's no compute that's not in here. So even though I allow this stuff, it may not, I, I still need to uh, uh, give access to my specific network. So um, same process, I'm just gonna go back to my network. It, remember, it's a twofold environment, it's a twofold uh, process. First, select my storage, um, select my subnets, and once that's um, set, again, if I go back here to my uh, routes, I should see now a couple of new new routes popping up um, here in a second, hopefully. Yeah, still enabling. And um, 
by the way, um, <clears throat> this is you got to be careful when you do this because when if this is a, obviously this is a demo environment, but if you do this in production, your connections will be terminated at the at the moment you make this change. So <clears throat> it's very um, recommended that you that you perform this uh, over a maintenance window and not not just uh, during the day because you, you may disrupt your traffic. Um, but anyway, it is still updating. It's going to take a second or two. It does. It takes a little bit longer. But um, what I should see is a very similar entry in here, just for, with more routes uh, that are for the IP addresses for the storage environment. And uh, going back to my other areas, so I have a couple more for uh, for the regions. And now, if I come here to my environment, and they're succeeded. So going back to my network, I add the same process. I choose my sub. Come on. Um, let's see. All right, so let me, let me reopen this. Coming here, select networks. You know what's not popping up? Let me just try again one more time. I'm using the preview portal, so. But uh, the 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 point is is very similar. When I um, when I choose this, so my service endpoint is enabled now. It says that it succeeded in both from my storage and SQL. Uh, I see my routes, and now coming coming back here, I will be able to. I should be able to select my virtual network. And once that virtual network is added. Um, there he is. Um, I'm going to be able to reach this endpoints. The what I'm expecting to get from here is I should be able to retrieve my data from this endpoint, from my Azure endpoint. So I'm just going to try to do that, but not my uh, on-premises. So on-premises should still be uh, blocked while um, Azure should be uh, working. So let's let's test that out. Let's see if um, so. There he is. Test container, no problem, right? And um, going back here, storage accounts, test VNet. There he is. So now I I'm I'm blocked access. So. Again, um, just to summarize, and because I know I'm, we'll get kind of run on time, a um, few, few considerations, and I'll get into Q&A here in a second, but um, very important, virtual machine disk traffic is not affected by network rules. So what does that mean is your VMs, you, if you deploy a general purpose VM uh, storage account, this is only for, for uh, blob storage, right? So your, this traffic is not affected by any of these uh, rules. Um, and again, it same applies to just ARM, just no no classic support. And you can extend this to any pair regions. I, I won't get into any of those de de details, but a, a pair region is is um, and I I can send some additional information on what it is. But it's it's predefined pair region pairs in Azure where you can uh, extend this this um, uh, this this feature. So a few considerations. Again, the service endpoints will uh, override any BGP or UDR routes from the addre address prefix. So you've got to be careful when you're playing, when you're uh, wor working with your express route. Remember, storage does support site to site and express route. SQL Server no, won't. But um, if if you're doing uh, storage over express route, you need to make sure uh, or understand that your routes will be um, overridden. And uh, there is no additional charge, so and not right now. And and for what I understand, it's it won't be charged, and even when it's publicly available, and there is no limit on the total number of service endpoints in a in a specific virtual network. So you can have as many as many as you as you need. There there are though like the probably there's limits on the number of SQL databases or the number of storage accounts, but from the network networking perspective, there is no limit. Couple resources here, use the uh, standard stuff plus uh, the service endpoints overview. 
And at uh, this moment, I will probably just jump in a couple questions. Um, so um, let's see, I have a list. Hey, Naveed, is there any question that hasn't been um, answered yet? I think there is uh, there is one question. It's right now in the window. In this okay. scenario, Express Route VNet service endpoint do on-prem firewall need 1433 open? I think there is one. I'm not sure if you can see it. Okay. The... Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing that. So yeah. um, first of all, the, the, remember SQL <clears throat> Express Route that doesn't work yet. It, it's not um, in. It, it's only for storage. So. Uh, VNet to service endpoint to SQL, uh, it still works over 1433. Like my example right now, I'm, I'm using, if, if I show you my, my configuration of my, uh, configura my config file, it's pointing to a endpoint right here, right? And you can see the password doesn't matter, right? Um, it's, it's pointing and it's making a you know, standard SQL connection to 1433. Um, so if you want to connect the developer machine to talk to SQL database, yes, it's 1433. Now, another question from Sparrow, Sparrow Donald, uh, when this will be available in its US2? We don't know that yet. Um, and uh, there's, they're, they're working heavily, and, and I, I don't expect uh, this to take long enough. But, but there, there's a lot of, of people asking for those reasons, so it shouldn't be that, that long. Unfortunately, we this this call is there's no NDA uh, information since it's a public information, so there is no NDA um, uh, info that I need that I can uh, um, share today. But uh, what I know is that they're working hard on getting that up to speed. <clears throat> Excellent. So, um, what are the regions? It's currently available. Yes, sure. Right now, um, the regions. They, they are different for both the storage and SQL. So storage is available in West Central US, West US 2, East US, West US, Australia East, and Australia Southeast. And for SQL is West Central US, West US 2, and East US. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? Feel free to unmute yourselves and grill me a little bit. All right, so, oh, there's another one. Our scenario is, is on-prem SQL Studio Management via uh, PPTIP to Azure SQL Pass. Um, that's still supported in, in well, and in, in that's that works today. So your environment, you will be looking at your SQL firewall and adding your IP address in here, just like I have. So um, if, if I add my client IP and I open my, my management studio, which I believe I have, um, no, I don't have any big machine. Um, this is what you were looking for, right? You can you can't add like an internal IP address. You need to you must add an IP address that is external to the service. Yeah, I think Adrian, they were asking if they can add the private IP, like your machine IP on prem. You know, oh, like okay. one ninety two dot, you know, something I, like that. No, because we are only well in in this. Case we're only adding the the virtual uh, the VNets. It's for only Azure traffic. So your yeah. your traffic it's flowing from on premises, which we don't understand or we don't know. Like if I go back here to this diagram, we don't have. If you notice, we access this through a NAT IP. So we have no visibility back on your IP addresses or IP um, address space on premises. So the only thing that you can do here is, is by default using service endpoints, it's only for um, Azure traffic. Great. That's great. Connect via private only. We do not want to manage via public facing. Okay. We can we can take that offline, um, Sparrow. Um, that that'll be good. If, if you want to just send me an yeah, email. Reach us, yeah, reach us through email and we will be happy to help, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? So this is uh, Madhvi. Um, I just need a quick offline discussion on the SQL database connectivity um, to on-prem. 
Uh, I know there is a document that I'm looking at. I'm going to paste that in the chat here. Mm -hmm. uh, who do I need to reach out to? Um, yeah, you can ping me in that we, we can work. We can, I can work with you and put you in contact with whoever needs to uh, help you. Okay. So, All right. Thank you. Cool, guys. Well, um, thanks again uh, for your time today. And it was great. And I hope you, you guys, it was a good use of your time. Um, yep. Have a great afternoon. Thank you so much, uh, Adrian. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you very much. Thank you.